Well, good afternoon, everyone, Just uh, and good evening. Depends on when you're watching this. Didn't have time to really do a Facebook Live and get too involved, so I'm going to do this, this short video here to explain what's going on tomorrow, uh, mainly dealing with a lot of wind potentially tomorrow afternoon. This is a real conditional threat moving in, and uh, some of the model guidance is hitting it pretty hard that we're going to have some of these severe thunderstorms and an isolated tornado threat with it. Other model guidance is suggesting this is all going to sweep through with, with no big challenge. So that's the problem and the challenge in, in itself with the forecast. So I just urge you to stay weather alert as we go through the day tomorrow. It's going to start out uh, rather abrupt here. Here's what's going on. We've got an area of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere out here to the west this afternoon. Again, this is 3 o'clock in the afternoon Friday, and this is basically slingshotting all this upper level energy in our direction, and it's going to create a more unstable environment. Meanwhile, a little farther to the south, we've kind of have tomorrow mornings and the overnight events setting up here, and that's uh, areas down here to the south. Let me go ahead and clear that out and then uh, move around here. Uh, what you're going to see is all this moisture, deep tropical moisture coming straight off the Gulf of Mexico, big thunderstorms blowing up here. And notice the, uh, the, the, there's like a wave propagating away from this to the south. So very explosive thunderstorms today down in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but all that moisture is going to start moving north around 2 o'clock in the morning. So we may be dealing with flash flooding early tomorrow morning. Some of you wondering whether we can get a break or not. We will get a break around 10 o'clock in the morning in many areas, especially Huntsville West, and then that break will carry on uh, farther east. But here's the area of widespread heavy rain uh, from Huntsville down to Tuscaloosa over to Tupelo into the Shoals north of Fort Payne. This is 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, some of you may be getting that wake-up call from Mother Nature with lightning and thunder, but I don't think we'll have severe weather in the morning. Uh, that's just mainly going to be elevated thunderstorms with a lot of lightning and very heavy rain, maybe some pea-sized hail from this as well, and an isolated wind gust around 40 miles an hour possible. Here we go on to 7 o'clock in the morning. Again, this being Saturday morning, our 48 first alert weather day. And these storms continue to move to the east, and notice areas out here now west of Memphis where that main upper level low is, new thunderstorms developing there. So that's what we'll be watching as we get later into the day. But at 9 o'clock, we start to see the back edge of the moisture quickly moving out of the area off to the northeast. But behind it, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in just a second, the atmosphere will likely recover. Now here's where the models kind of are split. Some of the forecast guidance, the short range guidance is suggesting uh, we become unstable rather quickly uh, within this. And you can see down here in Tuscaloosa at 11 o'clock in the morning, it's already back to 69 degrees. All this warm air is going to begin surging back to the north. And you've noticed the last couple of days how muggy it's been out there and how fast the atmosphere recovered, even today after all the fog this morning. So this is somewhat concerning as far as the strength of the storms. But as I mentioned, it's a really complicated forecast. So the rain, we get a break between 10 and 11 o'clock. And then we start to see the upper level storm system out here to the west begin to move our way. And as it does so, it's going to collide with the air that's increasingly becoming a little more unstable. And this model here uh, does show some clearing going on right here. You kind of see this dry slot moving through and you get a little sunshine there. So if, if we do get a little more sun than we anticipate, the atmosphere will be even more unstable as this front arrives. So you kind of see this arcing line of thunderstorms. This is the graph model. This is the one that we use our weather vendor out of uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, this, they run this model, and it, it, it's been doing fairly well here recently. And then I'm going to show you another model here in just a second. That's the HRRR model, and it's showing... It's a little noisy, but it's still picking out some of these discrete uh, low-top supercell-type thunderstorms. Now, these aren't the types we usually get in spring, uh, but they can still do some damage and produce tornadoes. So by 5 o'clock, it's clearly moving east of I-65. I think that the more organization this gets, the, the more high wind reports we're going to get and the higher chance for at least an embedded tornado. Uh, and as we get past sunset, everything kind of lifts off to the northeast rather quickly. And you can see right behind this, by, behind the front, it, temperatures really start to drop quickly, and the wind picks up out of the northwest. Again, this is a conditional threat. It's a low-end threat, but nonetheless, it is a threat. So this is going to be the noon hour tomorrow. This is 
uh, look at the model guide. Actually, this is the, this is the graph as well. What we're looking at here is the CAPE. And we, at noon, the CAPE is around zero. And this is basically the buoyancy of the atmosphere, how unstable it is. Notice in red here, this is the CAPE. This is that air surging to the north ahead of the, the main line of storms that may form. So I don't think you're going to see a whole lot in the shoals here, Colbert and Lauderdale County. Well, watch Franklin County, but that'll be very brief, and that threat will end around 2.30 or 3 o'clock. And all we really need is about 500 joules per kilogram this time of year with a little bit of wind shear, so we're kind of on the edge uh, both wind shear-wise and instability-wise. But again, if we get a little more sun than we anticipate, these storms will be stronger. And again, I don't want to oversell this threat of severe weather because it's a low-end threat, but we still need to watch it closely as it develops. I think our threat increases here by 4 o'clock, so our ma main concern with the tornado threat and damaging wind threat is along I-65 and to the east as we get later. This is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Notice the numbers getting a little bit higher, and then we see these isolated thunderstorms here, and they quickly move off to the east and northeast, 4.30 or so, the Harvest Monrovia up to Hazel Green and Meridianville, then down here towards Holly Pond, Hansville, Arab into Gunnersville, Boaz, as we get past 5 o'clock. The threat continues, and we'll have to watch the Sand Mountain area as this moves through as well, and we continue to see this ending as we go into the evening hours. So once again, just wanted to give everybody a heads up on this and just let you know, just stay weather alert. We know you got a lot to go going on with the weekend, and we're also very aware um, that it's going to be warmer tomorrow. Many of you will be out enjoying it. But don't think the, uh, the morning thunderstorm convection is it because there's that conditional threat later in the afternoon. So again, thank you uh, for following my page here, and I just wanted to give you this quick seven-minute video update.